Welcome to a presentation of the SOTHIN Thin Client. The SOTHIN suite is designed to resolve day-to-day -day issues associated with modern, overcomplicated computer networks. It significantly cuts time IT administrators spend on supporting and training users, troubleshooting, and maintaining both fat and thin desktops. Products from the SOTHIN family allow remote user control, lockdowns, and easy configure single-purpose, single-application PCs. The SOTHIN suite is designed to save time, save money, and increase security. OK, let's take a closer look. OK, what is Thin Client? So Thin Thin Client turns a PC into an intelligent Thin Client device quickly and cost effectively. This ensures a seamless migration into the Thin environment. The Net Effect is a practical and cost saving solution for your IT department. Why would you need this? Well, this simple application converts a Microsoft Windows PC into a thin client, providing the security and management benefits of so thin thin client computing. Enabling users to work directly on your company servers, it centralizes administration, improves workflow, and at the same time preserves the capital investment in your organization's personal computers. So thin thin client computing also means reduced downtime caused by malicious software like viruses, worms, and trojans. So, what are the benefits? It decreases the total cost of ownership on hardware. Conversion between thin client and the Microsoft Windows desktop is easily managed. It prevents users from making unauthorized configuration changes or installing software. It helps prevent the spread of malicious software and viruses and helps prevent data theft or loss as no data is stored on the client device. It reduces the demand on IT resources and helps to prolong the lifespan of older hardware. It also improves employees' workflow and stops users from copying company data to USB drives, CD-ROMs, floppy disks, or other media. It provides access to the internet or web-based applications and presents the user with a clear, logical, pre-configured interface. Platforms supported include Windows 95, 98, NT4 2000, and XP, the 32-bit version of the operating system. It also supports all 32-bit applications which will run on the supported operating systems. It supports virtual servers, terminal servers, Citrix servers, cloud computing. It is hardware vendor independent. It also supports local CD, DVD and USB drives. It supports multiple monitors and it has full Microsoft Active Directory integration. Local printers are also supported as well as support for mobile internet cards and adapters which are particularly useful for converting laptops and mobile workers into thin client users. Full multimedia content using these resources is also supported. OK, let's take a quick look at some of the deployment options for the Sofin Thin Client using the management console for the Sofin Suite. Before the Sofin Suite is able to benefit you and your organization, we first need to deploy the software to the client devices. This is done through the software deployment application. Once we've selected the software we want to deploy, we can right click it and select Deploy Software. Using the Sofin Suite, it's also possible to deploy your own software packages as long as they allow for unattended setup routines. Now we've selected the Deploy option, we get prompted to accept the license agreement for the selected software package. This must be accepted to continue with the installation. Once we've accepted the license agreement, we can select which computers to deploy the selected package to. We have the ability to select alternative domains for those with more complex networks, and also the ability to install to as many computers on those domains as we wish. In this example, we're going to be deploying to a single device. Now we're being prompted for administrative credentials. These credentials need to be valid for each selected computer to allow the software to be deployed. The system will attempt to authenticate the supplied credentials. However, if this does not work, the deployment wizard will still attempt to authenticate the installation process with the supplied credentials. Here we have the option of selecting when the install will take place. By default, the machines will be rebooted immediately and deployed to. However, we can unselect this option to allow the software to install itself upon next boot. OK, now we can see the status of our software deployment. Any computers that fail to install will be shown here as failed, and you'll have the option of running the wizard again on these computers to solve any issues that may have occurred. Now we've moved to the Thin Client Manager, the application in the Management Console that allows us to control the behavior of the deployed Thin Client devices. Here we're going to open a predefined configuration file. However, on a new setup, you can simply click New Computer to create one of these from scratch. Here we see the start of the configuration options for this thin client device. 
The Restrictions tab allows you access to the most commonly used functions of the Thin Client package, including preventing access to peripheral settings and to disable certain hotkey combinations. We also have the ability to disable the screensaver or mute all system sounds. One of the benefits of the So Thin Thin Client is that it has the functionality to allow connections to Microsoft Terminal Servers, Citrix ICA servers, and more. For some computers, you may wish to disable the ability to connect to non approved server types. The Connection Clients tab takes care of this for you. We can also specify any programs that should automatically start when the client device loads. This could be anything from a logon script to a kiosk application. So Thin Thin Client also has the ability to lock down local drives. On some Thin Client devices, access to a local application may be required, such as a web browser, a counter C program, etc. These programs often have the ability to browse the computer for data and thus gain access to unauthorized items. Disabling unnecessary drives on the computer closes this potential security issue. Many times a network administrator may decide that because of the device is a thin client, it serves no purpose to have a user log into the workstation and then log in again to the server that the thin client connects to. For this reason, we have enabled the option of having an automatic logon function. This allows you to specify credentials which should automatically log the workstation on, thus allowing the user the ability to sit down at the thin client device and immediately get to work, rather than having to wait for a local logon. While the so thin thin client maintains the look of a hardware thin client, there are some options that allow you to control the extent of this appearance. Here we have the option of turning off custom application icons, disabling the startup splash screen, and to disable any custom wallpaper that may be on the system. Okay. At this point, we need to set an administration password for the device. On each SoThin Thin Client device, there is the option of gaining access to the configuration locally by use of a special hotkey combination. This screen will be password protected with the password you specify here. This stops any unauthorized user from gaining access to the local configuration. The final step in configuring the SoThin Thin Client is to specify the management server. This is the name or IP address of the computer that holds the authoritative management console and manages all SoThin Client settings. You can also select the group that this device belongs to. The group controls the applications that are available to that particular workstation or user. OK, now that we've deployed the software and configured the client, we're going to update the client with the settings we've just specified. By default, all SoThin clients that have a management server specified will check that server every time the application starts, and if any local configuration options don't match what's on the server, the settings will be reapplied from the server to the client. We also have the option of sending the thin client settings down to any number of configured devices. Simply select the devices you wish to update and click OK. In a similar method to the software deployment wizard, the update desktop screen will show us which of the selected computers were able to receive their updates. Any computers that fail this step may have a firewall or other configuration that may prevent communication with the management console. Even though we sent the settings to the computer, it's still running as a standard Windows desktop. Uh, that is to say that although the software is deployed, the system hasn't yet been converted to run the SoThin Thin Client interface. If we now right-click a computer and select Convert Desktops, this allows us to make ready for use any computer with the SoThin Thin Client software on. The Convert Desktop window works very much like the Update Desktops window. However, here we have an additional option to turn the selected computers into SoThin Thin Client devices or to turn them back into standard Windows desktops. We can highlight multiple options by using the Shift or Control keys. Again, we see the status screen, showing which computers were able to receive the command to convert. Configuration complete, we can now open a Sathian remote control connection to the applicable client device, showing the finished setup. In this window, there are three connections, an instance of a locally installed browser, and two terminal server connections. So, as you can see, the SoThin Thin Client offers quick and extensible configuration options that allow connection to various platforms while strengthening the security of a local device. Integration with the SoThin Management Console gives administrators the agility to deploy and configure both single or multiple devices. For further information on the SoThin Thin Client, other products in the SoThin Suite, or to request a download, please go to www.sothin.net. That's www dot